Welcome back to Tired Map Plays Video Games. Today we're doing something a little different. As you can see, I am in Pokemon Home. But why Why am I in Pokemon Home? You can't really play Pokemon Home. Well, as many of you probably know who keep up with Pokemon, Sword and Shield got a lot of criticism because it doesn't have a complete Pokedex. It doesn't have all the Pokemon ever, all 900, I think 900 now, all 900 plus Pokemon. I think the base game had about 400, 500, but with the two DLC packs, Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra, with each of those DLCs releasing, they expanded the Pokedex, so yes, you could find the new Pokemon in within those like new locations, but you could also transfer them if they were in home or whatever. However, even after the two DLC packs, and I'm operating under the assumption there will not be more, but I'm sure if there's like remakes this gen, like Platinum, hey, we should do a Platinum remake, then they'll probably have even more options. Obviously, all of the Sinnoh decks. So there's 45 Pokemon of... I have transferred all of my Pokemon from my complete runs of Omega Ruby, Pokemon Y, and Pokemon Ultra Sun into home, and what were able to go to Sword and Shield have gone to Sword and Shield. Now, the first time I, I did a subscription of home was when they first updated for Isle of Armor, and that's when I transferred everything in, and then I did another one when Crown Tundra came out just for the extras, and... Hopefully, by the time, it's about mid-November, this subscription is going to expire November 24th, I believe. As of right now, I believe, the Melmetal thing is happening, so you transfer any Pokemon from Pokemon Go, and they'll give you a Melmetal that's Gigantamaxable, and if you have a Melmetal in Sword and Shield, otherwise, you can't use the Max Mushrooms from the Isle of Armor, which sucks, but, like, how they first introduced it was, like, you have to be level 40 within Pokemon Go to transfer to home. I hope that's changed at least by the 24th. So anyways, I want to go in and talk about these 45 Pokemon that cannot go to Sword and Shield, and just talk about memories that I may or may not have with them. So let's go into home, and just see see what's left, see what, what can't be used in Sword and Shield, and maybe used later. A single Murkrow, that's it. So we're actually going to change the view for this. I want to go to list view, and there they all are. There's all 45. So let's go in and talk about them. We can check summary on them. And I have some information. This is a Murkrow, no nickname. Uh, seems to have first been met in the Hoenn region, so I I believe this one was just something I found flying around, flying around with a uh, Latias, Mega Latias, and I just found it and I was like, oh, I don't have it. It was probably when I went back to get the Regis. I will say, you know, I said I transferred everything from those three games. However, there's one exception that could not go to home, and that's Cosplay Pikachu. She is forever stuck in Omega Ruby. And probably one Pokemon from uh, Y and Ultra Sun each, because, you know, there has to be one left. You can't transfer all your Pokemon, or you just can't play the game. So something's left in those games. But those files are probably erased, too, so, you know. But Omega Ruby had cosplay Pikachu, God rest your soul. This is a random marker I probably found in the sky. This is where things get interesting, because this is, notice the name's Snapcraft, I use that for original name of the channel, MattCraft.derp. I used that for Y and Omega Ruby, I suppose. So, this was actually my second playthrough of Y. I never beat my first playthrough, because the first time I chose Chespin. Never beat that, but when I went back into it the second time, I actually did something pretty interesting that I came up with. Sort of a pacifist run of Pokemon Y. And you could theoret- nope, not, no spoilers. You could theoretically do this with any any Pokemon game. But the way I did it was I only used Pokemon that the game gave to me, because Pokemon X and Y give you so many Pokemon. I also never fought any wild Pokemon, except the ones that made me fight, like Snorlax, Eveltal. But I had to catch them in those cases. So how did I grind? How was I, how were my levels high enough? The battle, the battle chateau. Battle chateau, I just grinded the heck out of that, because it scaled with my level, kind of, as I progressed. So that's how I avoided ever grinding wild Pokemon, and I only used for that whole run Pokemon that the game just handed to me through eggs or, or otherwise uh, fossils. Yeah, so what I first chose was uh, Fennekin, which became Delphox, because the first gym was a Bug-type gym, and you, I don't think you get any other Pokemon that they just hand to you before that point. So I, I have this Delphox. They, they don't put they don't have the Kalos starters in Sword and Shield, so I have the Delphox. Interesting name, Eric, which if you saw the Sword and Shield, well, Shield, if you saw the Shield uh, first impressions, you'll know I named Nicket Eric after the drummer of KISS, Eric Carr, whose makeup was the Fox design. I believe that's the same reason I named this Eric. So that's just interesting that I, like, kept that 
dynamic, but it's 72 because I use it throughout the game. Obviously, you can tell at level 45, I did not use this Murkrow. So moving on, that's so. <laughs> the name for a Staravia, which I seem to have caught in a quick ball. Uh, and that's also in Pokemon Y, Kalos. And this is part of another thing. We're going to skip forward a bit. Star Raven, which is a Starly at level 1. So I'm sure I breeded it from that Staravia, also in Kalos. So I'm sure it came from an egg. So that's so Star Raven. Haha. -ha. Do, do you get it? Do you get the joke? It, it was it's the, the, the Disney show? Haha. -ha. Clearly, level 22 and level 1. Another one I did just didn't use. I just caught because I like... I like Star, the Star, the Starly line, Staravia, Star Raptor, from because my first game was Platinum, so you know, I saw it and I'm like, I like it. So this is a Chespin from Kalos, but if you notice, the original trainer is Shauna. This is actually from I forgot entirely until I was looking into these boxes. I assume this is post game. Shauna will trade you one of the starters. I think the one that yours is strong against in post game. For any Pokemon. So you could give Shauna any Pokemon. No, I don't remember what I gave her. But I have Shauna's Chespin. And I named it Chester. Because I, I don't know why. It just kind of worked. It's level 5, so I clearly never did anything with it. So that's that. Kalos region. Uh, this shield on. So the thing about Kalos is in post-game. Maybe not even in post-game. Maybe earlier than that. But in post-game... You have access to, or maybe it's just one specific location. Oops. You have, yeah, because they're kind of the other shield on Cranidos. Because they did add a lot of uh, the fossil Pokemon to Sword and Shield through the DLC packs. But Shield on and Cranidos lost out, and I think they're the Gen 4 ones. In, in Pokemon X and Y, there's a point when you can get, like, all the past fossils from pre, because that's Gen 6, so pre Gen 6. So, I kind of just have them. I named this Necrodius after the villain in... <laughs> the main villain of Kirby Mass Attack? I don't know why. I might have been playing Kirby Mass Attack at the time. I don't know why I named it Necrodius. That's it, uh, that name was just in in my head. I don't know why this that Shieldon's named Lee, but they're both level 20. I clearly never used them. And I think my other fossil Pokemon from Y went into... Went into... Sword and Shield. There's Star Raven. Useless. Ampharos. So this one's from Alola, the first one from Ultra Sun. It's level 72. I don't remember clearly, but based on the fact it's level 72, I think I used it on my main team. And I think one of the main reasons I did that, not just because I didn't have a... I didn't have a... Electric type on my team up to that point. And I wanted to have one. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where I caught it. I don't know if there's a way to tell. It just says a low region. I not, don't know if there's a way to tell. My name in my name in Ultra Sun was just M A T. Why did I Why did I do that? That's weird. But I also knew that in post game you could get Mega Mega Stones, and I, so I wanted Mega Ampharos. So I'm sure when I traded it in, it had the Mega Ampho the Ampharosite. But that's that's uh. It's Olivia, all all the electric moves. Yeah, I, I remember. I do vaguely remember using Ampharos. And another one I used in my Ultra Sun playthrough, Crabominable, which evolves from I don't remember. Crabominable evolves from Crab Brawler. You'd think I would remember that name, but the thing about Crab Brawler is Crab Brawler has a haircut like Frankie from <laughs> from One Piece. So that's why I named it Cutty Flam, which is I don't know if it's Frankie's actual name, if that's, like, his real name, or just what, like, Tom called him. Spo I guess spoilers, but not really spoilers, because that's revealed pretty early on after introducing Frankie. So, that that's one of the main ones I used, ice fighting, in my Ultra Sun run. Good times. Often lost in thought. This is T-Card. <laughs> so, Ultra Sun, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon had a thing where you could catch... They, they would, like, give you totem Pokemon, and it's not even necessarily the ones that you fought in the games. So, like, I think it's different for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, or it, it at least wasn't Sun Moon, whether you had a totem Gumshoes or a totem Raticate, Dark, Dark type, Alolan Raticate. So I don't remember, so I don't remember what Ultra Sun had. It may have been different from original Sun and Moon. So I believe this is officially the totem one, but that doesn't really reflect... In, in home because 
that would only affect how it appears in Ultra Sun. Because I have the, uh, I have the grass type one. I don't remember what it's called. The grass type Pokemon. Pure grass in, in Sword and Shield, and it's obviously not, like, the size of a totem Pokemon. Anyways, the reason it's called T-Card is because of, uh, for, big, big ol' 45, which a lot of people compared how Gumshoes look to that. So T-Card, it's Trump Card. It's Trump Card. That's, that's its name. Haha. -ha. They're very on the nose. But uh, P people, when this Pokemon was revealed, was like, "That's that's 45." Actually, when did when did uh, when did Ultra Sun Ultra Moon come out? Or Sun and Moon come out? Was that pre Was that pre 45? I don't think it was, but it might have been. It might have been election year 45. Ooh, I'm not gonna turn this into political commentary. This is a level 64 electrode named John. I don't. <laughs> it's from Alola. I guarantee you, I didn't use it. So there's no w world in which I use an electrode. I think I just found it and I caught it. Or maybe it was a gift. I don't know. I don't remember. No, because it's in an Ultra Ball. I found it and caught it. It's level 64. Is it 64 when I caught it? That just seems absurd to me. But it's from Alola. I don't know why its name is John. This is a Shiny Mag Cargo. Now, this one was actually very interesting because I have found in my lifetime very few shiny natural shinies i found a couple in let's i think i found a shiny paris in let's go i found i actually found a shiny charizard a gigantamaximal charizard in a den during the zara aura event where we were fighting a bunch of zara auras that showed up in places when that was going on not long after the isle of armor came out and i found a shiny gigantamax charizard and i was really proud of that but this one was, like, one of the earliest, like, natural ones I can remember having in Ultra Sun. And it's a shiny Mag Cargo. And I'm really mad that it can't go into Sword and Shield because I can't show it off. It's just forever trapped in home until it can go somewhere. And eventually I buy another subscription. So, it's a trophy, if nothing else. I Again, level 64. I didn't eat... What kind of ball is that? Future me, put up what kind of Pokeball that is because I don't recognize that instantly, but I know I found it and caught it naturally. I'm pretty sure. The type of ball may disprove that, I don't know, but it's level 64. I never used it, but it's it's there, and it's always been something I, I like, I enjoy. And I don't have anything against uh, Mag Cargo. Mag Cargo is a decent Pokemon. This is Grumpig, its name is Aaron, it's also from Alola, because haha, game Grumps. He's, he's the Grump. Level 60, never used. Yeah, the fact that these are both level 60 makes me think I might have found them in the Ultra Den. Because I know you could find stuff in the Ultra Den that wasn't legendary, unlike the Max the Max Raid Den. What's it called? Dynamax Adventures in, in the Crown Tundra? I don't know. So, so yes, here here's Grumpig named Aaron. And then there's a Swana named Little Wonder. Little Wonder is the name of a song from David Bowie's 1997 album Earthling. It's a very good song, I like it. Don't I think I named the swan of that based on like the Wonder Swan, like that old like game console that I never owned or have even really seen, but I like was familiar with the name by the point I played Ultra Sun, so named it named it Little Wonder. I've just make up names. Sometimes I don't name things at all. This is a snubble named Ma, because Snubble's always the grandma Pokemon. See, it's level fifty five, so maybe the Ultra Den wasn't default, or maybe I just found it. I still found it in Alola. I don't, I can't tell you where I found it, it's just, ma, never used. It's also in a regular Pokeball, and while this is in a dive ball, so I don't know why they'd be in a regular Pokeballs. Yeah, how'd I get a level 50 Haunch Crow in a regular Pokeball? Named Paul, I can't tell you why it's named Paul. I don't think it's based on Paul Stanley, because Haunch Crow does not have Paul Stanley energy, nor Paul McCartney energy. He kind of has a beard, so does he have that? So interesting, I have a Haunchkrow from Alola and a Murkrow from Hoenn. That's that's just interesting. And here's a Metacham, which I remember finding in, in the uh, Ultra Wormhole. And I named it Medical Ham. Because <laughs> Medic Ham. If you don't pronounce it Metacham, it's Medic Ham. Haha. <laughs> is, that, is that funny? Am I funny? Metacham had, had a Mega Form, right? Yeah, but I clearly never used it because it's still level 60. And here is where we get a little interesting. So, we're back to Hoenn. Omega Ruby was was a really... Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire were really good in terms of their post-game. Like, they have an excellent post-game. Because as soon as you beat the Elite Four the first time, 
they give you a choice of the Johto starters, the Gen 2 starters, and then once you beat the Delta episode, they give you a choice of the Unova Gen 5 starters, and then once you beat a rematch of the Elite Four, they give you a choice of the Sinnoh starters. I don't think I ever did that, based on the fact there's not one in here, and I know the Sinnoh starters aren't available in Sword and Shield, or at least I haven't seen them. <laughs> They're not in the boxes, so yeah, so I don't have any. So this is level 5 Snivy after I beat the Delta episode, and that's that's like the main post-game content, but there's a lot of post-game content in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Clearly never trained it because it's level 5, but that's not a trend per se. And this is a gift Pokemon uh, within Omega Ruby that they give you, cast form. And it's interesting because I've seen the move Weather Ball a number of times in playing Sword and Shield, especially in the Crown Tundra DLC. I've seen Weather Ball out, out and about. But Cast Form isn't in the game, even though Weather Ball is like Cast Form's main move. I think Cast Form may have been the first Pokemon to have Weather Ball. But that's that's a Cast Form they give you. And this is a... not named anything, yeah. This is a Camerupt that you get in post-game from Team Magma Grunt. You can get a Sharpedo from Team Aqua Grunt. They're like both unnamed at the Battle Resort. I don't remember if it's necessarily linked to specific games. This list I'm looking at doesn't say it is. Anyways, I named it Geico Joke, because I guess when I played Omega Ruby, that was the height of the, like, hump day <laughs> Geico commercial. Level 58. I don't think I used it much. I may have used it a little. It does have a Mega Form, because obviously Maxi... Was that his name? Maxi used a Mega Camera up in that game? I miss Mega Evolution, man. But it's fine. And as I said, not a trend, because this was the Johto starter I got after beating the main game of Omega Ruby, after beating the champion. It was a Totodile, because they gave you the choice of Johto, and I apparently did get it to level 32, fully evolved, and never used it after that. But I did I did get it up there, so Totodile and Croconaw are technically in my Omega Ruby decks, wherever it is in, in time space, but in Hoenn. And this is Deoxys that I got at the end of the Delta episode that I didn't want to bother fighting, so I just threw it in a Master Ball. I never know what to use Master Balls for when I play when I play games. I never know what to use Master Balls for. This is a Timple, a Tynamo. Timple, what am I saying? This is a Tynamo, the smallest Pokemon, I believe. And it, I, I found it in Hoenn, level 38, called it Midget. Never used it. <laughs> Wait, it's pure electric? It's not electric water? That's interesting. Does it evolve into Timple? I, don't, I can't tell you what Timple looks like. It's fine. His name's Midget. What did I name? Deoxys is just Deoxys. Clearly I wasn't feeling very creative with some of these. This is interesting. This is an interesting Pokemon. So, it says it's from the Hoenn region, but you can see, like with Deoxys, which is part of, like, the story, so it says, seems to have had a fateful encounter. This says it seems to have a fateful encounter, too. So why do I have a level 5 Snivy, but a level 50 Superior? With the ability contrary, which is its hidden ability, I believe. And it's in a red Pokeball? This was an event Pokemon. They, they uh, distributed this. The official Pokemon website is giving out special codes to download rare Pokemon onto your Pokemon Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire games. It was a mystery gift. And the first code was Pokemon 497, which I believe is its, its Pokedex number. So, yeah, this one's really cool. It's a hidden ability superior that I apparently never used. But I like that I had it. After this, they did distribute the other two Unova starters with hidden abilities. I guess I never got them based on the fact they're not within home. This is a random fortress I caught at level 38. And a Great Ball in Hoenn. Not not important. Random Zeb Zebstrika I got level 38 in Hoenn. Random Venomoth I got level 36 in Hoenn. Although, two levels weaker, but I used an Ultra Ball instead. I don't, I don't know what's up with that. Nothing, nothing really important, although they have the same ability here. Random Illumise I got at level 13. Sometimes I just get Pokemon when I feel like it. I don't really know how I operate. Uh, when I'm playing Sword and Shield, it's usually something that doesn't have a Pokeball next to it, something I, I know I don't have. So random Illumise, random Kecleon level 24, random Tropius level 25. I was gonna say maybe I saw this one in the sky too when I'm flying on Mega Latias, but... Based on the fact it's only level 25, probably not. Random Minin, level 13. <laughs> now this one, prepare yourself for this one. Random Talo at level 17. 
I gave it a nickname. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what that nickname means. Don't hold it against me, but I don't know what that nickname means. I don't know if I was just trying to get get away with an almost swear, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> I have nothing against feminism. <laughs> I don't know why this is named that. I don't know what 16-year-old me playing Omega Ruby thought was so edgy about this. What? <laughs> I also like Taylo. I don't know why I didn't use Taylo and Swello. I probably had another flying type. And this is another trying to get away with an almost swear with this random slack off I have. <laughs> who ha who currently has Pokerus, by the way. I just want to say that symbol up there. I didn't know this till I saw it in Sword and Shield. Because apparently my uh, Sceptile from Omega Ruby had Poker Us. Uh, but it's cured of Poker Us. So, and I, it comes with some weird stat weirdness. I never knew it was a thing. Because before Sword and Shield, I don't think it was ever denoted. I could be completely wrong about that. But I did not know it was a thing until very recently. Like since the Crown Tundra release. But that symbol, when the, when the face has like an X through it, means it currently has Poker Us. You can look up on your own what Poker Us does. It doesn't, I don't care about stats at all, so it doesn't bother me. But I do wonder how that, like, affects, like, competitive stuff. Because they're all about, like, natures and stuff. But, like, what if you, like, get a good nature, but you got poker rust? Oops. Maybe it's a good thing. This is a random Geodude named Rick. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because it's, like, a rock, but rock isn't a name, so Rick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. This is a random nose pass at level 10 I never, never named. And a Slugma, who's not shiny. I forgot I got, of course, the Mag Cargo was, what, from Alola? And this is from Hoenn. But not shiny, level 15. Maybe I thought I'd use it as a backup for a fire type if I never ended up with one. This is a random <laughs> Grimer named Grimace, because it looks like the McDonald's character Grimace. Yeah, I've always thought that about, about Grimer. Grimer's just a happy purple boy, and nobody should, nobody should, like, harm it. This is a random Cacnea from Hoenn. <laughs> this is a spoink named Crafton. I don't know why it's named Crafton. Uh, I have this online friend named Andrew, Super Mario World Race, link it in the description. I don't know which part to choose. And his, his aesthetic used to be, like, gray. You know, back in, like, the Mario 64 Machinima days, which is a whole other can of worms that I'm not going to get into. I don't know if I ever have gotten into it on the channel. I've, like, mentioned it before. His aesthetic was, like, gray, so maybe I'm like, ah, oh, Spoink is gray. Let's call him Crafton. I have a Spoink and a... Oh, no, because wasn't the Grumpig from the Ultra Wormhole? Yeah. Grumpig was from Alola, so yeah, that's why I have this pre... preform. See, I'm covering everything. I don't know why this is named this. I don't know if it's another trying to get away with an almost swear, or if I'm just like, skid it. You know? Wait, no! Wasn't that a thing that like people said when I was like in freaking either early... I guess it would have been early high school if it was when I was playing... When I was playing uh, Omega Ruby. Like, people were saying like, skid it all the time, and I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what to name this skiddy. Why do I name random Pokemon? Someday I need to go through my Sword and Shield boxes. There's a random Gulpin. I didn't name it, but I will say I haven't. I don't know if it's this Gulpin specifically, but I have like a, a very specific memory of fighting because Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire were the ones that had horde battles. I remember hordes of Gulpins were the worst to deal with, and I think this might have been from like I whittled down a horde to only one because if there's ever more than one Pokemon. In a horde, you can't throw a Pokeball. So I think I waited till there was only one. And after it stopped calling for backup. I don't can they call for backup? I don't remember. It stopped calling for backup and then I threw a Pokeball. It was a good time. This is a Doduo. From Hoenn. Moving on. This is a Voltorb from Hoenn. Who uh, is cured of Pokerus. I don't know if that means I actually used it. It's a Voltorb, so probably not. It doesn't even have electric type moves. But it's nothing to John. But we can say that John, because John's from Alola, there you go, and this is from Hoenn. What's the deal with that? And this is a, a random clam pearl, no name, from Hoenn. And a random Shuppet, no name, from Hoenn. And that's it. Those are all the Pokemon, all 45, that can't go into Sword and Shield. So, let's... Here's a name, let's leave it on. <laughs> 
That's so silly, and I don't know why. I don't know why it's there. So, but I also want to show everybody, so let's actually go to Paul. <laughs> yeah, so... There, that's what we're ending it off. So yeah, 45, so if you don't have a subscription to Pokemon Home, you can actually only view 30 Pokemon in the box, and of course, the ones that couldn't go into Sword and Shield, there's 15 more than, so I wouldn't be able to view it, so that's why I made sure I recorded this while I still have the subscription. By the time you see it, I probably won't, but whenever they do a new Pokemon game, I'll move everything out of Sword and Shield and into that game, back into Home, into that game. So who knows how many more times in my life I'm going to pay for Home. But I do prefer it to Bank, because I think with Bank, you had to get like a year subscription or whatever. That could be a lie, but that gave me enough time to transfer everything to Home. And now I just buy like a month of Home whenever I need it. And I do cool stuff with it. And yeah, so hopefully Melmetal's available by the end of it. I hope you enjoyed this, me talking about memories with these Pokemon. I ha Of course I have so many more memories with Pokemon who were able to go into Sword and Shield, but that's just a lot of talking. And this is only like 45 Pokemon. Oh, we got to see some fun nicknames from the mind of my mid to late teenager self. So this has been Tired Matt Plays Video Games. Tune in next time for me to play another video game. Maybe actually play it this time. Later.